I like about this conference is that it really brings together patients, patient advocates and medical experts discussing about the problems, needs of the patients. You have a very close relationship to, to the patients and patient advocates in that uh, type of conference. So I just like to be here. The first impression that I have is basically um, quite a lot of people. It is extremely um, nice that you can talk to everybody and that everybody is as well involved and you can talk about what you have for problems and listen to others, what they are having and, and, and how they are, you know, dealing with this disease. Well, there's a lot of time that we spend together uh, chatting and um, getting to know each other and then we listen to presentations and we also engage in roundtable discussions so we're really exchanging information but also networking on a personal level as well. I feel it's a lot of learning and it's a lot of interaction. Rarely does anyone say get through a presentation when I haven't learned something new and, and taking, taking something away from it which is useful and valuable. Um, that's certainly true at this conference. It's been a huge amount of really valuable information which uh, I shall treasure and use. Each year, you know, there is something new that you learn and you go back and you try and incorporate it as much as possible in your own program. When I attend a conference, we always think like the togetherness is like very important, like we have to do it together because the sarcoma patients are very few people. In rare diseases, it's not unusual for the patient to know more about their disease than their oncologist, particularly a community oncologist who may not have time to keep up with rare diseases like just sarcoma. So to be able to connect with a patient allows me to help more people than I can, can really see in my clinic. The context of the Spain conference is special because I'm not myself a patient. Of all kinds, noise. You know, they're all patients, they're all automatic friends. The world of food you bring home is like peace that you are not alone, like it's lots of people in the same situation and that's the I mean the warming world that I think I come back home with. Yeah, thank you very much. Normally, everyone would now clap his hand or her hand just sitting in one room. So seeing this uh, video is quite on one side. It's, it's, it's very uh, exciting to see uh, these pictures or these, um, this movie about our community. But on the other side, you can imagine that really makes us sad that we can't uh, meet each other uh, this year uh, face to face. Uh, but I think we need to make the best out of the situation. So a warm welcome to this 11th span annual conference, to this uh, virtual conference. So just let me try to. So um, a very warm welcome on behalf of the uh, span board. And uh, my name is Markus Wartenberg from Germany. I'm the chair of Sarcoma Patients Euronet together with my co-chair Gerard from the Netherlands. And we want to welcome you to this uh, first uh, online conference. Uh, so as you know, Sarcoma Patients Euronet is this international network of more than 50 sarcoma, just and desmoid patient groups. We founded the organization in April 2009. That means we are working now for around about 12 years. This is a fantastic uh, period of time and uh, we have uh, held wonderful meetings and have seen uh, wonderful people engaged uh, in this network and then in, in these initiatives. So this year, uh, and this is maybe one of the benefits, we have the largest annual SPAN conference ever held. So we have around about 185 participants for the next three days. 
And if this will continue, you can see this picture uh, in the future, also with face-to-face -face meetings, we will need bigger rooms, bigger conference rooms. So uh, we will see what, what about this. So, okay. And we all know that our lives uh, had been dramatically influenced by the two C words. And uh, this has shaped, these two sh words have shaped and dominated everything globally, globally for the last 15 months. And uh, we have seen just this wonderful movie from our last conference. And this is about uh, 15 months ago when we last met in Milan, Italy. And uh, during this time, we have seen and we have experienced a lot of challenges uh, facing these two C words. But if you want to take it a little bit from a humorous side, uh, there were some early predictions of coronavirus and we could have seen it coming. So if you know, noted by the comic fans, if you go, many of you know Asterix, the Asterix comics, and there is a volume 37 Asterix in Italy. And there are scenes in which the spectators of a chariot race shout coronavirus. It's very interesting. A nasty charioteer. Well, what was this? There was something like a, okay. So a nasty charioteer, a villain goes, uh, who goes by the name of coronavirus. And this issue, interesting, was published in October 27. That's quite strange, right? So just moving to our reality, the reality is that Corona is affecting us and uh, this has been so far and also still in the near future. We just talked a little bit of vaccination. I think we are in many countries where we are in a very early phase of vaccination. So Corona is affecting us, it's affecting our, our societies and economies, our healthcare systems. And uh, we have learned about a lot of weaknesses of our healthcare systems that came out not just during Corona, but we have seen that these weaknesses of some healthcare systems had been uh, always there before uh, coronavirus. So it affects our daily private lives, our education. Many of you might have made experience with homeschooling, but also our way we work within home offices. Uh, some of us, they are sitting maybe eight, nine hours per day in front of the computer in doing uh, Zoom meetings and video conferences. It is really a challenge for our opportunities to meet and to collaborate. And the meetings are very often limited to, to just meet each other in a very formal way. But unfortunately, we miss the informal way, just meet each other in coffee breaks or during dinner or uh, beside the meetings. It, all, it, it also has affected our, the lives of our just and sarcoma patients, but also our patient organizations. We have to learn how we can change our work within the organization just uh, facing the virus. And also it has uh, faced our uh, colleagues from the medical community, but also from our uh, colleagues from the pharmaceutical industry. They all have seen these challenges and needed to work with the challenges. But we also learned a lot during this uh, pandemic, this global pandemic. Um, for example, we learned that we need better digital solutions in some of the countries and some areas of the countries. We also learned that we don't have to travel for an hour meeting, maybe for eight hours traveling to have one hour meeting. So in the future, uh, we can do more, hour, more meetings by uh, video conferences. So we learned a lot. And we also seen, or we have seen a lot of people during this pandemic uh, in television, but also in, on, on, on the internet who came up with very nice ideas or maybe they also empowered other people or encouraged other people. And I want to share with you one story or one small example from the internet. And this is a, a little boy from Glasgow, Scotland. His name is Harry Small, and he wrote a poem with named My Hero. And this is heroes come in many forms and they don't always wear a cape. A smile, a word, or an action is sometimes all it takes. They help us without taking sometimes putting themselves at risk. They could be a lifesaver, they could be a carer, they could look after children or keep our country ticking. 
A hero comes in many forms. This is very true to me. My hero is every one of you. Thank you. This is one of the very inspiring and many thousands of inspiring uh, messages and videos and um, contributions on the internet regarding uh, the coronavirus or our situation of the pandemic. But we also think, think about the dramatic part of this pandemic and the dramatic part means that we have around about 140 million people who are already infected around the world and also we have around about 3 million people who died on coronavirus and in every face-to-face -face meeting if we would have now a, a personal conference we would have taken one minute of silence and I think we also should do this now on, on our uh, Zoom conference, on our Zoom meeting. Just like take us one minute to think about the victims on Corona, the relatives and the people have suffered from Corona, but also maybe we think about some of the people who became heroes. So just let's have one minute of silence. Thank you. So thank you very much for your contribution. So let's move forward. And um, I also uh, welcome you on behalf of the uh, Sacoma Patients Euronet, but I also want to welcome you on behalf of our SPAN board and the team. Um, these are all the people who are behind the work of Sacoma Patients Euronet. So we have elected board members. We also have appointed board members and we have team members. And this is really a fantastic team working together with a high enthusiasm and high engagement really to drive Sacoma patients Euronet uh, forward. And it's really a great pleasure to work together with all these people and really uh, with all these engaged and really inspired people um, and to move the voice of Sacoma patients uh, globally forward. So normally, if we run our annual conferences and looking back to the last years, we have had fantastic conferences, 10 face-to-face -face conferences during all these years. Uh, normally, we are coming together for uh, three days, two days, three days, and to have a lot of uh, issues and, 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 and a lot of topics, topics that are combined in these kind of conferences. So we have medical updates in gist and soft tissue, bone and desmoids. We share our best practices, for example, when it comes to treatment, side effect management and a lot of different other issues. We exchange with top experts, but also with our colleagues from pharmaceutical industry. We hear and listen to uh, initiatives or projects that have been brought up by patient advocacy or patient advocates, we can learn from each other uh, in, in the field of patient advocacy, but also in the field of patient support. So how can we support our patients better on a national level? We are doing a lot of work or normally in, in capacity building. So how can we make our organization stronger and how can we make the voice of uh, the sarcoma patients stronger within uh, our healthcare systems. We learn about projects and collaborations. We are inspired or will be inspired or are getting inspired by different activities. But we also understand how different our world is specifically when it comes to healthcare systems and when it comes to the situation in different countries with healthcare, with access and a lot of issues. But we also practice a lot of friendship uh, during these kind of meetings. And I already mentioned this. Uh, during this meeting, we have a lot of uh, old and long year or long lasting long term friends, but we also see a lot of new people um, uh, during, during this meeting. And uh, we also try to have a lot of fun during this meeting. So this all is coming together when we are running our annual conferences. And 
this year, uh, you can imagine we would have spared no expenses or efforts for great conference locations. So we would be have been very inspired to find nice conference locations like this or like that. But unfortunately, uh, only Zoom remains this time to do our meeting. And looking to this picture, maybe some of you are familiar with this picture. Uh, and this is the first family on Zoom. Uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. This is a, a series, a TV series uh, in 1969 in the, in, in the US called the Brady family. And this looks like they are having a Zoom meeting. So these are the pioneers of Zoom established in 1969. So moving from this, we will have our Zoom meeting, our virtual meeting. And in the meantime, after 15 months, we learn to live with Zoom meetings. They are a central part of our daily work. The advantage is they are very efficient. We have no travel time. Uh, Michi have not to book any hotel rooms and any uh, flights to come to this meeting, but also we have more participants. And this, I think this is a wonderful uh, ex experience now with this meeting that we have these 185 participants, participants during the uh, next three days. Uh, the disadvantages, and we already mentioned this, this is less personal uh, exchange. And these virtual meetings are very nice. But as I mentioned before, uh, it can't replace the face-to-face -face conversations, uh, especially among old friends. And we, some of us, we know each other now for 12, 15 years. And so we will see we are looking forward. But as I mentioned before, we try now to make the best out of the situation. One of our challenge is uh, if we want to do such a real time meeting are the time zoom zones. Uh, so you can imagine if we are now talking about two o'clock in the Berlin in, in Berlin, it's very late in Tokyo or Sydney and it's very early in, in, in the US. So that's one of the reasons why we can only do this meeting, meeting half a day in the afternoon so that we can uh, be in contact with many people around uh, the world. Uh, to share this meeting in real time. Uh, here are now at the end of the meeting some Zoom keeping notes. And uh, so beware when you have your camera on or only your audio on, that could be make a big difference. And uh, so enter your name and your country by clicking on your name and rename it so that we can see who is uh, 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 taking part in the meeting, but maybe also from which country. Then check your chat for any information coming up during the meeting. Use the chat for any questions you might have had during the meeting. Um, specifically, if we have a questions and uh, answers part of each session. Um, we have our moderators and they will handle the questions uh, arriving in the chat. And that's also very important. Please uh, don't uh, discuss individual cases, personal cases during the sessions, because we have a very limited time and um, it is not um, appropriate during such a meeting to talk about personal or individual uh, cases of patients. And this is also to do with uh, data protection. So if you have any questions, uh, we need to handle this via the chat, or maybe we need to arrange a situation where you can get in contact on a private basis with one of the one of the experts. Another topic is we will just in a few seconds we will have a polling, a short polling uh, on the beginning of this day and on the beginning of. Uh, day three and we will announce the results by the moderator. And also, last but not least, uh, I think just in the case of an online meeting, it's very important to the moderators, the speakers and participants to, to be really on time, because if we want to have screen breaks or something like this, we really need uh, to stick to our schedule. Okay, at uh, the end of my talk or my introduction, my welcome note, um, I want to thank you to all externals and internal speakers. Uh, they took a lot of time to prepare the presentations, but also to do the presentations. So thank you very much for this. Uh, I also want to thank our funders, our colleagues from healthcare industry, from pharma, 
and I went uh, briefly through the list. So we will have during the next days, we will have around about 20 people from the different country uh, companies uh, joining us for the meeting. And we have some of the companies, they are really support us from the very early beginning, like for example, Pharmama, Novartis or Bayer. But we also have uh, newer companies like uh, now uh, Blueprint, Daichi Sankyo, Decipher, GSK are uh, supporting our organization. So thank you very much for this. And I also want to thank uh, the SCAN team, Michi and Catherine, for all your great work before the meeting, but also just uh, during the meeting. And now I want to briefly uh, hand over um, to my colleague Gerard, and he want to make some additional comments, Gerard. Well, thank you, Marcus. Um, and I'd like to say good morning to the people in the United States and Canada, Mexico, Brazil. Uh, good afternoon to the people in Europe, Russia, Africa, and good evening to the people in India, Singapore, Japan, and Taiwan. We are really covering all of the world. Uh, I'm delighted that you all joined us for this meeting. And like Marcus said, it's a pity that we cannot uh, meet physically in person, but I feel there is a blessing in disguise because we have 185 participants in this meeting from all over the world. It's more than ever before. And it means that many more patients and carers are involved in this meeting that, and that is very good. It's an opportunity to strengthen SPAM, but also I think it's very important that uh, we hope that this will also strengthen the local organization in your respective countries, if there is one. And if not, maybe you can start a new patient organization. And we, all the people from SPAM and current members of SPAM would be happy to help you. You can make use of the experience that from all the patient organizations who are, who are part of SPAM. And of course, we hope that next year we can all travel to a very nice place to meet again face to face. But if that's possible, we will certainly also continue to use Zoom as well so that more people can participate. I'm convinced therefore that this meeting marks a new era in the development of SPAM involving more patients, um, uh, representatives, more carers. Um, and I think um, this is a very good thing. So we'll, ha we'll have to keep that as a possibility. I look forward to this conference. I think we have a valuable program with many good speakers and many good topics. Um, and um, as Marcus, I want to say a big thank you to all the people that made this possible. I wish you all a good conference. Thank you. So thank you, Gerard. So just our last slide. So before just the meeting, we prepared a cup of coffee for you and some digital cook cookies. So please help yourself. Uh, and I'm always happy with my, my personal mug. I don't know whether you can see it from, this is a present from my friends in India from week here. So enjoy the conference, have a really good time. And uh, so we are now, we'll start the meeting with a small polling. Poly. And I'll just hand over uh, to Michi. Just stop the presentation. Yes, hello, everybody. You should see some polling questions now coming up on your screen. And we would like to invite you to answer the questions. There are three questions in total so you have to scroll down please and we would just like to give you a few minutes now to answer the questions
so there are still replies coming in. I would say maybe half a minute still. So I don't see anything else coming in. So we will end the polling and I can show the results. So we have a bit of an overview about where people come from today. So at the moment you have the biggest portion coming from Europe, but also Asia, North America, South America is represented. And it seems we even have one alien. <laughs> who is not from this planet, but joining us. Then the next question was about which diagnosis do you represent? So we have the biggest portion with soft tissue sarcoma with a bit more than 50% and uh, GIST as well, same like bone sarcoma and desmid tumor is a bit a smaller group. Then the next question was about which group you represent. If you are a patient, a caregiver, patient advocate, medical expert or pharma representative. So here we see most people are patient advocates, but also patients and pharma representatives. And the last question was about how many times have you attended the SPAN conference already? So it's our 11th conference this year. And uh, we have indeed five people who have attended all conferences yet, which is great. And also a big number, 50% who visit the SPAN conference for the first time, which is great. So a special welcome to them. Okay, so I will stop sharing with the results. And then we can go over to the first session and I would like to hand over to Kai, who is moderating the first session with different spotlight presentations.